the VAR show the one place for your weekly football update Hola a very warm welcome to the VR show the show which talks about all the ways major football leagues till today we are going to continue the theme of interviews and we have former Malaga player and former Liverpool player Mr Francisco Duran with us so without wasting much time i would like to first thank Francis for coming on the show thank you and welcome to our show and i'd like to begin by asking you how are you and what are you doing during this pandemic period hello everyone from from Nepal i hope all of you are okay here are here are you okay you know It has been a difficult time for everyone in the world here in Spain. The things are not not easy, but we are starting to recover in the normal life. So we hope soon this is going to to finish. So you know, like I'll move to a lighter topic. There is football, and you have played in many leagues in Europe. So how different are the footballing cultures? You know, in the leagues you have played in. Yeah, is I have I have been playing in a few different leagues and every every culture is is different. I think that uh, is good for footballers because every experience is you have to take it to to grow as a person first of all and as a footballer as well when you retire the the football career is not too long for for footballers if after 10 15 years you have been living in two or three countries and you have different experience that's is for all the life and this will help you so you know like you moved to liverpool at a very young age okay, like as a player you were very young in terms of your age and also your career and maybe it did not work out as you would have liked to you know like such a big club you would have want to left you would have want to leave your mark there how do you look back at your time at liverpool I look back uh, well right now I look back as, as a positive thing you know I so many people asked me you were you were too young when you went there things didn't work as it supposed to be and uh, here in Spain because I was a really really young player but I was playing for under national team under 19 under 20 uh, it's supposed to be I'm going to be a great player with so many potential Some of the players who are playing now in the national team and they won the World Cup. They were substitutes at me in the youth categories. So uh, it's, it's difficult to explain how it looked back because my experience there was the best. Uh, playing um, more than playing, uh, living every day in uh, one of the greatest clubs of the world. But it's a little bit sad because. it didn't go how i supposed it to go and it, i was suffering too much because i wanted to live my experience as a footballer and it was impossible so when you moved to liverpool you're quite young what is the biggest difficulty you faced when you moved to liverpool well uh, the big the biggest difficult thing the biggest difficult thing i didn't have time to think to think about that because I got my first injury in my second day, my second game, sorry. Um that was my difficult thing. You know because most of the things there was fa- fa- were fantastic. The club uh, helped me with everything. So many Spanish we were there in that time, Spanish players. So most of the things were fantastic. The the most difficult thing was the the to to compete every day with with uh, that injury. So you know like you are uh, very young and you are having you are making your mark as you said in Spain under under 17 and 19 and also with Malaga do you like what made you leave Spain your home country and go to Liverpool at such a young age uh, it it was a difficult decision because my dream here in Spain was always to play for your former club was was Malaga it's a good club here in Spain but i were playing so well when i were you uh, i had my uh, professional debut very young and i did well we i were playing with with the first thing here very well so 
every every day so many people call me agents so many clubs were interested you biggest club but uh, it wasn't my my focus you know i i said uh, i think this is not possible i just start my career and biggest club to to do offers for me is not it's not easy but one day uh, from liverpool rafa benitez was the coach he called me and he said me in a few days someone is going to go to malaga and we are going to have an offer for you so uh, i said my dream was to play in malaga but liverpool is, is is the biggest club of the world so i take that decision and that was all so you're like how was it working with rafa benitez at liverpool Yes, with Rafa, uh, my relationship with him was r really good. As a coach, I couldn't work too much with, with him because uh, most of my time were in the still in the room uh, on the gym. Uh, obviously, as a coach, everyone knows. Uh, right now, too many coaches are in a high level tactically, but ten years ago, he was two or three steps forward with with everyone. And he, he was one of the best uh, as well as a person he helped me a lot because you know i remember stories like uh, in quarter finals champions league quarter finals i was working in the gym and he spent maybe that morning i remember against real madrid quarter final he spent 20 minutes talking with me on the gym and i said hey you are not focused i was thinking you are not focused on the game tonight and he was there helping and trying to to support me every day so i i just have nice words for him how was the language in liverpool was it difficult for you to understand yeah it was at the, at the beginning was a, a little bit difficult because um, here in spain not so many people we are not talking like other countries english but the first six months when i i was so young the club offered me you can go with the english family for four or five months uh, and it's going to be good for you so many young players did this before and it helped me a lot so it wasn't too too hard for me the the language as well because they are in the club we were six seven eight spanish players and stuff so that make it easy things so now you are a midfielder and during your time at liverpool there was another Spanish midfielder by the name of Zabi Alonso. How good was he? Oh, he, he was fantastic. You know, even now, even now, Liverpool is one of the three best clubs in the world right now, and they have a great team. But still, everyone uh, think Xavi was is better than the players who are playing now. Xavi was a top top midfielder, and his career was fantastic. So you know, like at Liverpool, who are your best friends? I had I had so many good relationships with with many players, but if I have to take two, one of my friends now is Daniel Ayala, who is still there playing in in England for Middlesbrough. He had a great career there, and another of my best friends, my best support in that time was Fabio Aurelio. He played for. He's Brazilian. He was uh, as well. He played for the national team. W was my best, my best support there. And we are still in contact. A uh, good friend. So, do you remember the Fabio Fabio Aurelio's goal against United, the free kick? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember. I remember that day. It, it was nil four. Could could be the result. Yes, I remember Fabio score, Stevie score, Fernando score, but I remember the free kick. He was very good with the free kicks. Good left foot. <laughs> so, you know, like uh, as a player, you have been very unlucky with injuries. So, if you had to give advice to a young player, what advice would you give him or her? Is I have uh, what I learned with all that injuries. Uh, I learned uh, when you are young, because so many times uh, my parents told me, you have to study, study, study. I was in professional football when I was young, but if I regret something, uh, is uh, I had to study more. Because even if you, if you had a good career, you need to form 
as a person and you have you need to have more culture so it's the only thing when you are young i, I said of all the young players all the young you have to study first of all study and later if you have the luck and the conditions to to play in a professional league it's, it's much better for you if you don't have that condition at least you you have something for your life Definitely, and uh, you have now gone into coaching. You are coaching with Marbella, United FC in Spain, and also with Chelsea uh, camps. So, did you always plan to get into coaching? Yeah, right now I'm I'm coaching. When I retired a few years ago, I start to coach young kids. I take my lessons to be a coach, but it was just because to do something relationship with football, but. I didn't have idea what really I want to do in the future. I knew I wanted to be a relationship with football, but I didn't know what to do. Uh, right now, I I finished my because I was in uh, I was in Marbella United. I finished my time there, and right now I have been four years working with Chelsea Foundation here in in Malaga. But after the, this pandemic. I want a new challenge. Uh, I, I told you before, I think when you go to different countries and you live different cultures, you grow as a person. And I think now I'm reflecting what to do in the future. Uh, probably I will be coaching, but I, I don't know where. I, I'm open to, to new challenge and new things. So which is your favorite football club in the world? Well, my favorite for footballer right now is uh, for me, the best is, is Lionel Messi. But when I was young, my my idol was Roman Riquelme, the Argentinian. It was my idol, and I was watching all his games. When he came back to Argentina to play the last two or three years, I two or three in the night, I was here in Spain <laughs> waiting to watch his games. <laughs> and your favorite club? My favorite club now is, I have a few, but obviously Liverpool after my pass there. I really love Liverpool. I watch every game. Every every year I go to Anfield to watch some games. But here in Spain, when I was young, I support Barcelona. It's still one club I like. I didn't support too much, but I like. I prefer Barcelona to Real Madrid. So, you know, like, uh, what do you think about uh, Liverpool? Will they win the uh, Premier League this season? Yeah, of course. If we don't win the, this season, uh, everyone is going to... All the people from Liverpool is going to kill the team. That, that's not possible. Even if we lose all the game, I think we have already the, the title in the pocket. We have been waiting so many years and we deserve this great title. So... I'll talk about one particular person who has been very instrumental, I think, in Liverpool's success. Jurgen Klopp. How is he? Oh, he, he is fantastic. You know, uh, you know, Rafa Benitez, when I was there, did a great job in Liverpool, put the club in a great level. After the stage of Rafa, Liverpool was five, six years. Good club, but not in the top. So when club take the team, the club wasn't in the in the top of the Europe, but he has done an incredible job. You know, in five six years now, Liverpool probably is one of the three best clubs in the world. You never know who is the best, but in the three is Liverpool. And, and the the good thing I think we have more time. The futures we look at the future with so many positive things. I hope a club stay for many years. So, uh, on that note, I'll ask you a question in which you have to choose one of the two. Okay? So, whom do you prefer? Pep Guardiola or Jurgen Klopp? Oh, difficult. Because I'm a coach, like, I like to have the possession. I was a central midfielder, like, use very well the ball, the pass. So it's difficult. For me, it's a draw. I, I, as a coach, I prefer more Guardiola's style, but 
Liverpool is in my head, so it's a draw. <laughs> so I'll make it more easier for you. Whom do you prefer, Guardiola or Cruyff? Uh, well, Guardiola. It, it is difficult because to compete uh, the past with the present is be, very difficult. Guardiola said always his his teacher was Cruyff. So Cruyff in that time was a really good coach, but Guardiola. Uh, take a step forward the football and uh, where the other is top. Whom do you think is a better midfielder, Steven Gerrard or Xabi Alonso? Uh, no, Stevie. Stevie is, Stevie is good. <laughs> in England, in Liverpool, uh, Xabi Alonso is a top, was a top midfielder, but Stevie is a legend. From the football, Stevie is. It's, it's different. It's, it's a special player. It was a special player. How was it working with him, Stevie? Yeah, it's fantastic. You know, it was, was the same. For me, the sad things I had in that time, midfielders, uh, they are in my position, Xavi Alonso, Gerard, Mascherano. Um, I couldn't learn as much as I can from them because I was injured. So I always said, what I could have done working three or four years with this kind of odd midfielders. Uh, but they give me so many advice as a young player, but it's not the same to give you than to watch him and try to do the, the same things and they do every day in chain. So on that note, I'll ask you one final question. Whom do you prefer, Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo? Oh, that's easy for me. That that was the easiest question, Lionel Messi, for for sure. I I respect a lot Cristiano Ronaldo. I think he did incredible things, but it's it's the same question you asked me before, uh, Xavi or Stevie. Cristiano is a great player, one of the best of the world, but Messi is, is special. In 50 years, we we don't know if we will see something like Messi. <laughs> So I'll make it a little bit more harder for you. Which do you think Liverpool 2008 under Rafa Benitez was better, or Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool is better? Uh, <laughs> no, I think the what they are getting now is much more what they we got or the team got in 2008. Was a, a good stage uh, that that period two or three years with Rafa were very good. They won the Champions League. When I, when I went, uh, we lost a Champions League final. The, the year they won the Champions League, I wasn't there. It was one or two years before. And we made, I think, in that three years, three semi-finals. One final and two semi-finals Champions League. That uh, is a great, great, great thing. But I think right now it's even more. Because uh, the Premier League is what we were waiting for so many years. And what they have done this year is incredible. So I, I think right now, this Jurgen Klopp's team uh, is better than that team. <laughs> so on that note, Francis, thank you so much for talking to me. And I wish you all the best for your coaching career ahead. And I, I hope you can maybe coach Liverpool someday. You know, you never know. So best of luck. Stay safe. Okay. Uh, you're welcome. And uh, what I said before, uh, all the best for for you and for the people there in, in Nepal and we hope soon we can we can uh, enjoy the life and of course the football. Thank you. Okay. See you. Bye bye.